Actually, no, dude. That's for real. Like, keep that shit. That's for real why I'm doing it. And that's why everyone should be doing it. Should be doing what? If, if you're working for consuming, you're selfish. What? Yeah. Yeah, another thing, too, for single people, if your friends... Nah, this is terrible. If, um... Uh-oh. Yeah, this, this one might be... Uh-oh. Controversial stuff. I think they want some controversy, man. If your friend... If you're trying to save money and all your friends... Feels good. See, this is, this is the problem, right? What's the problem, Ryan? The problem is... Um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Um, I'm not gonna hold anything back. I mean, we could do this like a, like an interview. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Ralphie and Ryan podcast number five. I am your host, Raphael the Realtor, with the internet sensation, Mr. Ryan Reynolds. What's up, guys? Internet sensation. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. You are, man. Yeah. I bet you um, I probably am going to get a lot of shit from that. Internet sensation, internet it's sensation. It's funny, guys. It's funny. Just to let you guys know, Ralphie named me the internet sensation. Yeah. Well, you mess with me enough. Yeah. I can mess with you a little bit, right? Eh, it kind of boosts my confidence, so Does it's it? all right. Yeah. Sometimes I... Br- I pretend and I tell myself that I'm an internet sensation. That's what I do for friends, man. Yeah, thanks, man. I that's appreciate what, that's it. That's what good that's friends what, do. That's what good friends do. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is podcast number five. What are we going to be talking about today, Ryan? Man, I'm just glad that we made it to podcast five. For the five viewers, thank you so much <laughs> for all your likes. Yeah. Um, we Does really go a appreciate. Long way. Yeah, we really appreciate the comments, the likes. It uh, it really helps out. Because this is a lot of work, you know, because we have a lot of other stuff going on. But uh, but you guys keep us motivated. And I think we're going to be talking about a great topic today. Um, it's actually have been it's been requested. Um, we're going to be talking about some finances. And, um, you know, there's a disclaimer here. We're not uh, a financial advisors. Um, it's just what we do um, because we've read some books and uh, we believed in some some theories and and. Uh, some economics and and uh that's what we're following now right yep so um i thought uh what better way than to uh, talk to ryan a person that um that has read some books recently and has had a change of mind about his finances and his financial future right yeah yeah i think that's the best way to do it uh ralphie because um, you know, us being, you know, who we are, we are young and, you know, we haven't really, when, when I listen to people and when I get advice from other people, I try to put myself in their shoes and I, all I do is I say, look, what has this person done and should I be listening to them? So it's hard having a podcast and trying to like inform people because I don't want to inform anyone because I don't know what I'm doing is correct. All I know is this is information I got from other people that I trust, and I'm still trying to do it. I haven't reached it yet, but they're good practices, right? That's it. Absolutely, man. It's all about a mentality, and you have to follow some some basics, yeah. I think, to get ahead. Yeah. It's, it doesn't happen by accident. Yeah. That's and, for sure. And it just goes back to like you know, like the, the, um, the life coaches and the business coaches. I don't yeah. want to be that. I don't want to be like, this is the way you should do things because we don't know the exact right correct path it's just something we're actually putting in practice right now and we're we still haven't even really seen results right so um yeah i mean i'm excited um i'm not gonna hold anything back i mean we could do this like a like an interview thing i can interview you or whatever just you know keep it 100 keep it 100 is the truth that's what we're gonna do today so uh let's start with um with you ryan uh, your early years, um, what did you think about money? What do you consider early years? Like 18 years old when you got out of high school. When I when I got out of high school, I didn't really, I was um, I was kind of blind about money. I didn't really understand money. Um, I just knew I needed it to survive. So I was just more focused on my career path and trying to actually accumulate money. Um, I wasn't really responsible with it. I just wanted to make it. Yeah. And what did they tell you about money? I mean, did you get any principles um, from friends or family or anything like that? Um, 
basically all I really learned from, I mean, not even just friends and family, but even like high school, um, there was really no like in depth of, um, you know, uh, financial, um, you know, advice or anything like that. Basically what you're taught or what I was taught is just, Hey, you needed to survive, find a job and make it. That's pretty much it. Um, and then, and then just save, but nothing like really in, in depth detail and like why you need to save and how to actually, you know, make your money, um, um, you know, how to grow, how to grow real wealth. I wasn't taught that. Yeah. So, um, so you got a job, you started making some money and, um, I think, uh, one of the things that we want to talk about was, um, a car expense and, uh, wants versus needs, right? Um, how old were you when you purchased your first or financed your first car? Yeah. So this is the thing going back on that, my mindset on the money, right? So when I was 18 years old, obviously, um, being an 18 year old, um, I wanted to make money because I wanted nice things. I mean, you can't deny that, right? Why does, why does anybody want to work, right? You work hard, you want nice things, you should enjoy nice things in life, right? That was my mindset. So I worked and then, um, I made it to where I was actually making a decent buck for my age and I uh, wanted to buy a nice truck. So I financed a Tahoe and I bought uh, a Denali. I financed a Denali. Nice truck. Yeah, it was really nice. I liked it. With TVs in it? TVs, sunroofs, nice sound system, clean leather. It was nice, dude. I was, I, I was styling, man. Yeah. So I purchased that um, and later on about like halfway into uh paying it off uh my mindset just like totally switched um uh about uh, about money my view on money so you financed this truck and then um halfway through you had a change of heart and and what triggered that uh, change yeah so after purchasing the truck um i had i was gonna go on um vacation and you kept telling me about this book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But like even before I was went on vacation or whatever, uh, we would always like, you know, we, we, we were experimenting with uh, other opportunities than what we were doing. And we were trying to, you know, try to figure something out just to, you know, make an extra buck on the side. Right. Right. And um, including cars mostly. Yeah. And then um, I remember you telling me about this book, on, like you read that this book when you were like 18 years old or whatever, and you always bothered me about reading it and stuff like that. And I finally had one on vacation and you told me, dude, just whatever you do, you don't even have to read this book, bro. Just put it on your audio books and just listen to it on the airplane. So I finally listened to the book. It's called Rich Dad, Poor That's Dad right on the hard copy. I nev- this is not the hard copy. Yeah. I never personally read it um i listened to it um i actually listened to it multiple times and once i listened to that book um my mindset just totally switched on money man it just totally not just money but like lifestyle what do you remember from the book how long has it been well shit i'm 26 i like uh, maybe 19 or 20 or whatever i don't know six years ago five years ago and i should probably should probably listen to it again probably yeah. read it again or, or even just listen to it again but what do you remember from the book what kind of principles what was the book about roughly because it, i think it's a i think it's a very interesting book just because i think i have heard so many stories from so many different people that get involved in in real estate investing or some some sort of like business uh, venture because they've read this this book right and I think one of the reasons why um, it, it does that for most is because it's a super simple read and it's based on a story. Yeah. It's not like a, um, you know, one, two, three. It's, it's, a, it's a story and the author carries you uh, through his story and uh, what he learned uh, financially from, from two different people that were really close to him. Yeah, so the book is really not like a strategic book. It's just a, it's it's more of a mindset um, on you know um, you know lifestyle, uh, business, finances. It just puts you in a different mind state that um, I just never knew really knew was available to me. I never learned this from my friends or my high school or 
anything like that. Um, it's just basically about um, two. It's two dads. One one's rich, one's poor, and the the kid uh, learns two different lessons from each different father, and he takes a different path, and he becomes really successful um, based on um, the the father that um, was the, the rich dad. Um, yeah, it's 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 more about obviously like you know corporate and like the rat race and stuff like that too yeah um that's a little hype too it, it, it's all hype but yeah. um it's it's just it's just a really good starter book for it finances super, super good to learn book. to learn about uh, j- just to like open your eyes about like a different world on uh the way um possibilities yeah that, um can possibly happen if you um if you use your money right yeah it's a great starter book, and I don't uh, agree with 100% of the stuff that's in it, but a lot of it I agree with. What's What stuff? What stuff I do agree or do not agree? Yeah, what don't you agree about? So what, do do the what you do agree and then what you don't agree with. Um, the stuff that I agree with is um, his assets versus liability is most important. I mean, that's the number one thing that I got out of the book, that I wanted to avoid uh, liabilities and... Um, and increase um, my income through assets. Yeah, that's that's pretty much that was like the major lesson in that book is that was it. Um, understand what um, assets and liabilities are. Yeah. And um, there's a real simple definition. Could you define it real quick? Consuming. Uh, you want me to uh, which one? Dep- assets and liabilities. A- according to Robert Kiyosaki, the difference between an asset or the definition of an asset and the definition of liability. Um. I don't know Robert Kiyosaki's definition. I don't remember it, but an asset is something that uh, grows in value, and a liability is uh, something that just costs you money. Yeah. So I think at the simplest terms, he puts it: assets are stuff that puts money in your pocket, and liabilities is stuff that takes money out of your pocket. Simple. Real simple. Yeah. Which moves around a little bit in the in the financial world. The definition of those two things depends on who you ask. Um, so what do you disagree with? You know what the the rich dad poor dad, I think um, the quitting the the rat race or whatever. I think that's true for a lot of for a lot of people. You know that you're stuck in this, like um, this life where it's you feel like it's it's happening uh, it's happening to you and you're not making life happen. Um, but I think some of it is them selling you a a dream, pipe right? dream. Yeah, dude, because. If you want to make this is the gun on its truth. If you want to make more money, you're going to take on more problems. For sure. That's just the way. It's just the way it works. Yeah, that just goes back to when everyone says they want to be financially free. They want they want to make all this money or invest their money in real estate so they don't have to work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that is that true? I mean, you you have to you have to work your ass off in order to even get there. So like you're putting you're put you're putting all your work up front in hopes that it will pay off in the future yeah it just goes back to the like the four hour work week right yeah to, to get to that point yeah no it's just like everyone thinks that if they just like just investing their money in real estate right like yeah i just i want to be a landlord so i just don't have to work or I, you know and but it's like well Passive income. yeah but you still have to work and you're always going to have to work yeah yeah so that's another thing um uh, so he, he pretty much defines um his rich dad as having assets that that give him uh, ca- enough cash flow where he no longer needs to work which is important in your later years right when you're yeah. older um, and then can you define or can you roughly define the difference between being rich and being wealthy being being rich and being wealthy wealth is um, rich is uh, your income and wealth is what you hold yeah so that's what uh, rich dad uh, poor dad kind of teaches to always keep track of your net worth yeah so that's um a good way to um keep track of your wealth uh which would be your liabilities minus your assets or how much you own versus what you owe yeah all right so that's basically what rich dad poor dad was about to sum it all up in like two minutes or three minutes that we did so you listen to this pod this uh what was it a podcast it was an audiobook right it was an audiobook and for the people that say that they don't have money to buy the book or they don't have they don't want to download audible or they don't have time to read 
I literally looked it up on YouTube and they have like eight different like um, eight different channels that you could listen to the book on for free. So if you want to listen to the Rich Dad Poor Dad, just Google it or YouTube it and it's there. That's a great point, Ryan. Um, Rich Dad Poor Dad is, is free and we're living in the greatest era where information is pretty much free. It's pretty much information overload at this point. Everybody is dying for attention that it's an, inf- it's an information overload. But um, uh, one of the things that I wanted uh, to mention before we go any further is that uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad has some seminars and um, like some weekend seminars and I've heard a lot of bad things yeah so seminars yeah so uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad also has like weekend seminars and you guys need to be careful on who you listen to because a lot of these um, what do you call these these Ruru programs these guru <laughs> programs yeah they also have a system of uh, extracting all your money so yeah, it's because um, they're really, they're really, really good at um, selling you a dream, a dream, a dream. And uh, they're, you have to also think too, like, like even with the real estate investing, like you know, classes and seminars. It's like, if you're making so much money investing real estate, why are you sitting here doing a class? Why aren't you out there making money real estate investing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, it's cool. It's one thing. If you really want to teach and you really want to put it out there, do this shit for free, right? Yeah. What, why, like $50,000, like that's what that's what the average thing is for for like... Um, the guru programs? The guru programs. Yeah. So it's like... They have levels to that, right? Yeah. And it's like, you know, if you... Going back on the information overload, if you really want to learn anything, you could literally just go online, research it, or just really just reach out to somebody that's in the field and they'll be able to help you out. And then just like some major, like, like real estate books or whatever. This, this one's just more about mindset, like the millionaire real estate investor. But if you want to like, we, we started off with bigger pockets, um, for real estate investing. Yeah. Bigger pockets. And then just like YouTube stuff. There's a lot of people out there. You just have to be careful who you're getting your information from. But the most important thing is, um, once you take in something, act on it, right? Just don't, don't sit there and sit behind the books all day long and just keep procrastinating. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you read this book, Ryan, and then, um, you went to Florida, right? Rich dad, poor dad. Yeah. And what happened? What did you, what did you think about the book? Yeah, man. After I read it, um, my, um, my mind totally shifted. Um, as soon as I started learning about assets versus liabilities, it was a whole new world. Nobody ever taught me about it. I didn't understand it. And it just makes sense. Just like instantly just makes sense. Like once you really, really learn about it, you'd be like, oh man, I've been doing everything wrong. And then it opens up like, you know, it, it, get, it does get you excited. And um, motivation is a factor. Yeah. It's necessary it, it, though. Yeah. You have to be motivated because if you're not motivated, you're not going to, it's not, you're not going to get through it. Right. No. But um, it just opened up a, um, uh, new world for me and uh, you know I th- I really thought like things could have been possible and I always had that drive to um, you know try to um, you know make something of myself and um, it just I was I just felt like I purchased a car and I was like oh shit it's a liability right so my first instinct was Okay, well, get rid of all my liabilities and start saving up so I can start uh, building, um, getting assets and start building my wealth because that's pretty important. Yeah. So that um, pretty much defines number one, first, first, uh, wants, first, needs, right? Yeah. I didn't need a nice Denali truck. I sold it and, oh, man, that was my nicest car. Or that was my nicest truck, by the way. I had some some pretty beat up cars i think i sold that one and then i bought the the centra for like 600 bucks yeah i was driving the centra yeah so so then you did that and then um what else happened well i didn't have much um credit card debt so um what's number two Avoid credit card debt. So Avoid credit card debt. I guess debt. that's perfect. So, um, yeah, I didn't have much credit card debt. Um, I was I was pretty I was I was pretty cautious about that because growing up, I just heard everyone say, "Be careful with the credit cards. Be careful with the credit cards." Because I guess a lot of people, um, 
you know, have them uh, swiping frenzies. And, uh, yeah, you we're know, all guilty of that. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I, I always I always understood that um, it wasn't good to, um, you know, spend money on my credit card. So everybody knows that, but we still do it. Everybody knows that, but we still do it. Yeah, for sure. But but if you have if you have credit card debt, that'd be the the one thing that you should probably take care of first because most credit cards have really high interest rates, right? Yeah, yeah, like t- you know, 21, 30% or you know, something crazy like that. Yeah, somewhere in the high 20s, right? Yeah, so yeah, that's just you're basically borrowing money and then you're paying to borrow the money on top of it and um, you know, you just for consumption for consumption that, and that's another thing so um you know i under then i figured out um it's okay to take on debt um if it's um helping me grow right so consuming is um spending money on stuff that is affecting it's it's not growing in value it's actually hurting you so I would just, um, I'd be more cautious on what I was spending my money on. I would, um, I'd spend a lot of time, more time on what my money's doing for me than consuming it. Um, I just wouldn't, um, I got rid of the, the truck and I just wouldn't buy fancy shit. That's pretty much it, dude. And you started saving? And I started saving. Um, I don't have an exact number. People say like 25%, put 25% away. I just put all this shit away. And that's it. Put it all in the savings account because... One day, an opportunity is going to come, and I'm going to have it set aside. That's it. I just, I, you know, I haven't, um, since then, I haven't um, financed a car. Um, I haven't really financed much. I paid, you know, most of my, you know, schooling off. Um, I just, my main focus when I was, um, you know, 18 to now was get rid of all of my debt and figure out how to increase my income. That's it. That's my number one focus. Yeah. And that makes total sense because a lot of uh, millennials have a uh, high student loan debt, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Uh, but we're doing great though, Ryan. I mean, you looked up some stats and uh, we're doing pretty good, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Millennials are actually ahead of um, our parents. Awesome. Um, by the curve. Yeah. So uh, we're doing a lot better. I'm sure there's some controversial stuff behind that yeah there's a lot of like you know statistics and stuff like that and you know they say millennials are lazy and how are we lazy we're working our butts off you just sit on the counter dude you eat your doritos and you play your xbox we're working harder than ever just because we have so much uh college debt yeah yeah the reason why we have so much college debt is because it it costs money to be educated yeah and you know the way the way the um future's going as um you know people people need that um that top of the line education man you know that makes sense man so well just getting back to the rich dad poor dad because their program would probably tell you the exact same thing that you should um you should leverage your credit cards to spend money on um, their program that's going to make you millions of dollars yeah see i agree with that a little bit but not not the program, right? But I feel like if if there's something that is put on your plate and you're like, I don't have any money, but I have this credit card and I could possibly there's nothing's guaranteed, right? Like that's that's the whole part of the game, right? It's that that's what investing is and um invest in your money. It's it's not guaranteed, it's it's a risk, right? But if you have an opportunity, I think you should probably spend the money. You should take a you should take out a loan to make money so take out college debt to one day make you have to you have to um it's that's a huge controversial thing right a lot of people are saying don't go to college do go to college and that's that's a major thing that um us millennials are having right now um i see it a lot um really really close friends and family social media a lot of people their number one complaint is um college debt right but there's there's a lot that come comes into play with that yes I'm not making a message where you don't need to go to college. Um, There's jobs out there that you cannot get without a college degree. You need it, right? But it's also 
a lot of people that you sit down and talk to and you say, well, why did you choose this or why did you go here? And they don't really have a full answer on to why they've done it. And, you know, you come to a conclusion where it's like most of them I feel might be peer. We might be peer pressured to go to college. Right. Like you feel like you're forced. Like if you're not going to school. You're lazy. You're lazy. What are you doing with your life? What are you Ryan? doing with your life? And, but see, there's a there's a lot that comes into play with that, right? Like if you're out partying and bullshitting, and that, and you're not going to college, and you're not doing that, that's a different story, right? But if you're really sitting back and you're doing your research and you're trying to figure something out and you're not bullshitting around, then that's cool, right? Like. I knew what I wanted to do right away. Like I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. I didn't even like hesitate to do it. If you like don't really know 100%, uh, if you're not 100% for sure what you want to do with your future, you should wait. You should wait because that is a huge, huge expense. Expense right off the bat. Yeah. Because if we're talking net worth here, right? We're talking net worth. Net, net worth is um, how you um, measure wealth. Then that already is going to put you behind. So if you need to go to college, then you sit back. And then that's another thing. If I'm taking out $100,000 when I'm going to school, I want to know what's what's the $100,000. Where's, where's, what's my ROI? Yeah, what's my ROI? What is the best $100,000 spent on my education? Because, yes, we want to all be educated and we should be educated. But where can I get my best ROI? Yeah, it's like that everywhere. All right, right. So rule number three is or the third don't is what? We have for number three that you shouldn't buy a new car. Definitely do not buy a new car. Now, I seem to tell people my opinion on this, and I catch a lot of hate for this. Oh, man, this stirs up so much controversy. Yeah. And it's usually because people have new cars. Yeah, and it's, and it's, it's, it's hard to talk accept. about. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to accept. You know? this, is, this is what everybody is saying, and... Uh, it's tough to defend, really, the, the position of buying a new car. Yeah, you can't. It's tough. You can't. I've personally seen a car um, depreciate in a year $40,000. So the fact that you're buying a brand new car and you're driving it off the lot, uh, th that diminishes the value of the, the car. Yeah, so buying the car actually hits, like, all of these that we wrote down, right? So... Um, that just goes back on to uh, consuming and what your wants versus your needs. Uh, everybody needs a car, dude. Everybody so, needs a car. So if you're telling people but don't buy a new car, then what the hell? How are they going to get to work? They can buy a car. They can buy a, a pre-used. Yeah, but I'm not a mechanic. I need to get to work, and I have a kid, and I cannot afford for it to be breaking down. Yeah, there's some there's some good cars out there. There's some very good cars. I know a little bit about cars, and there's some good cars out there that will give you uh, a good return on your investment. And that's pretty much what you're doing. Because um, a lot of millennials have a lot of college debt, you should try to avoid uh, specifically automobiles because they're the largest asset that's depreciating in value. And it's also easy to get a loan for. You can, you can get a loan for $30,000 pretty easily, right, if you have decent credit. Yeah. It's a so and and then that thirty thousand is going down, quickly, very quickly. There's a there's a rule of thumb. They say don't invest your money in stuff that rusts, rots, or depreciates, and the car does all three of them. Exactly. That's so, good. So it's just um, it's just being disciplined and just being aware of the situation. That's now, it. Yeah, and it's tough because it, you're dealing with emotions here. It's very tough, especially because I've been there and I've done that. Me too. Um, I was young, a young buck, wanting to, you know, feel good. It, it feels good. See, this is this is the problem, right? What's the problem, Ryan? The problem is you sit there all week. You sit there on your phone. You're like, damn, I want to buy a new car. I was told I could buy a new car. You know what? What can I afford? Okay, I could afford this. Oh, damn, I can see myself in here looking fly, right? And it's like, it's possible, and it's real simple. I could just, you know, get financing. It's really easy financing, and yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. You're all happy for a week, right? You're good, and then you, you know, and then, and then 
then you want the new thing. Then it's like, damn, this thing's old. It's already it's already starting to, you know, a year into it. They got the new one. I want the new one. I want the new one. And then you find out the damn thing is not even worth nearly what you owe. So you're just continually, continually um, um, adding up the adding up the debt on it. Yeah. But it's just a continuing like um, you want that um, you want that good feeling, right? Yeah. And in some cases, depending on your personal finances and, you know, where you stand, maybe you should have a, a brand new car. But for the majority of the people, especially t- to get out of debt, you should not be purchasing a, a brand new vehicle just because it's a it's it's a depreciating asset and it drops so quickly. And we all make mistakes. I know I constantly do it, even on Amazon, because it's so e- simple to, to order something. It's like, a, you know, that uh, that one touch you know buy or whatever yeah i touched that thing like 20 times this week yeah (laughs) and those are all expenses that you know that you haven't accounted for the problem that i have with with a car is that it is a large sum and it drops very quickly very very quickly so i try to avoid buying a brand new car because uh you know i could in a pinch i could uh use that um for some other expenses. Yeah, and then uh, going back on the the, um, I need something reliable to get me back and forth to work, and I don't want a used car that keeps breaking down because it's costing me a lot of money. But uh, ideally, if you really think about it, um, you're actually losing money in the long run financing it. If you really uh, do your resor- uh, research on reliable cars, um, and you not having to pay the car note every single month is going to if you're um, responsible with your money, you'll have that. Um, nest of money in your savings and when it does break down um, you'll have the money to get it fixed and uh, even new cars break down all the time and new cars so, need tires they need brakes they need maintenance they so still need money in the long run um, you're just better off just uh, driving the Honda or the Toyota right now even though it has bullet holes in it there's some nice cars <laughs> out there that are cheap you don't you guys don't have to get us a $600 beater you can get a decent car for for a good price right yeah yeah you can get a nice car you could for a couple thousand dollars i mean you can get a nice honda hondas yeah. toyotas any japanese four cylinder car is good yeah just don't buy an emotion most importantly yeah yeah or a german car <laughs> ouch all right so um what's the next one the next one is I'm going to leave this up to Ralphie because Ralphie is a married man. So your partners are your fin- and your, your partners and your financial goals should align. Where do we even start here? Well, Ralphie, how should married people align their finances? Um, your husband and your wife should sit down and talk to you about their financial situation and what their financial goals are. Now, most people have this aligned, right? But um, I think it's important if you don't have this figured out that you uh, take care of this immediately. So talk about finances, talk about your credit score, talk about your savings, talk about your 401ks, um, and then see if you guys can align together to try to accomplish these goals that will hopefully benefit both of you guys. And by um, by having um, a, a both a husband and a wife aligned and pushing towards the same direction, you can get a lot more stuff done. Um, now, it takes some, um, some planning and a lot of communication and most importantly, trust. But uh, if you're in a marriage, you should trust your husband or wife, right? That's what marriage is all about. You got to trust him or her. So, um, yeah, having your finances together and being aligned financially on your financial future also super important together. It's you can do it by yourself, but it's very difficult, especially if you if you're gonna have conflict at home. Yeah, so you guys both need to to be aligned financially and pushing in the same direction. All right, um, for all the single or engaged people out there got a little schooling on uh financial um some financial uh, advice with accounts so you you're saying um everything should be uh 50 50 no 
it's never 50 50 because sometimes the wife might make more than the husband yeah but i mean if the wife makes more money or vice versa yeah vice versa whatever who it doesn't matter what what if one person is one person is consuming a lot of it you gotta have that talk I, I, I also still don't believe that uh, because your income is higher, you should you should be allowed to to have larger expenses. Right, because then that 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 uh, goes off uh, defeating the purpose of being a team. A union. Yeah. That's what marriage is—a union. Yeah. So you need to be you need to be understanding, and you need to understand uh, and talk about all the major financial expenses right because if someone's if someone's consuming it and someone's um you know focused on uh, bringing in more income then uh at the end of the day the goals aren't aligning right and then that's the whole reason for a marriage right that's why people get married because they have the same goals the end goal so um that ha- plays a huge factor so if those aren't aligned then it's not going to work it's going to make it very difficult and i know there's a lot of marriages that suffer uh, because of finances right so yeah. it's super important to, uh, most important to just sit down and talk about it and then honesty 100 percent transparency and honesty um but that's what you everybody should have and I, most people do but i'm saying if this if this is not you this is super important just because it's a crusher it's a big crusher this is good man i'm glad you're uh schooling me man schooling you schooling me man this is just stuff uh, let, let's, let's get the 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 disclaimer or disclosure disclaimer whatever um this is just what's worked for me i am not uh, money bags i'm just saying this is what's worked for me um just based on what i've read and what i've uh, put into action it's worked for me and um i I think it's it's good enough advice where i I feel comfortable sharing it it's worked for me (coughs) morals man yeah but uh if you're single um your friends also need to align with uh that's, with your expenses that Ralphie, that's, a, that's a big one too that is the biggest factor on what changed my whole entire life and i would have to say that uh the people that you surround yourself around is probably the most important thing and i say this a lot and a lot of people disagree with me with me or whatever and it's probably wrong but it's what's the most important that's the most uh, important thing that i've um that impacted my life is um who i spent my time around not even who i spent my time around but what i'm consistently engaging myself with every single day what i listen to um what content i'm engaging with or taking in or who i'm listening to what books i'm doing what i consistently do on a um, day-to-day basis is what is going to affect my future if i it's 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 simple whoever we're all tribes as, as human beings we're all tribes we adapt to people if we're hanging around with certain people we're just automatically going to be like them it's just human nature that's just what i feel and um if you um want to be financially stable then be around people that are financially stable if you want a healthy marriage be around people that are have healthy happy families it's just the way it is yeah because you, you pick up on that stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Another thing, too, for single people, if your friends... Oh now this is terrible. If... Um, Uh-oh. Yeah, this, this one might be Uh-oh. controversial stuff. I think they want some controversy, man. If you're, fr- if you're trying to save money and all your friends are like, I'm going to pick you up in 15 minutes and we're going to get messed up and drop 400 or 500 at the club for some VIP seatings. Um, I'm just saying... It's going to be very difficult for you to save any money. Yeah. You know what, Ralphie? I'm glad you brought that up because that goes back on emotions and discipline because... I'm not saying drop your friends. Let's clear that one up. Yeah. No. No. We all, we all need our friends. Um, it goes back on uh, discipline, man. Um, it was very hard for me as um, you know, uh, a young squire... Um, making a little bit of money and to not use it and enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Like I see people my age going out and partying and I got, I get invited to go to parties and to hang out and shit. And I, and I don't, but what about YOLO? You only live once. Yeah. You're in your youth and you're not doing what makes you happy. 
Well, see, that's another thing. What, what, what's your definition? Everyone has a different definition of being happy and being successful. Um, I, I would say for the most part, I'm happy. Uh, when I'm depressed, I would say um, is when I'm not working towards my goals. Um, me going out, uh, I, I go out once in a while. Everybody needs to go out, right? And, you know, interact and, you know, feel the, you know, real world, I guess. If that's what you want to call it, I don't know what you call it. But um, my happiest times is when I feel like I'm being productive. I don't know why I'm like that. But me going out and not doing anything um, to reach my goals is when I'm the saddest. So, but um, also it's it's tough when you're young and you also see a lot of people your age going out and laughing and having a good time. And it's like. I mean, I have, it's not like I can't go out, you know, I do have some money. I want to, I want to enjoy it. Yeah. But, um, it just goes back on, uh, being, uh, disciplined and just knowing, uh, just, just not being lost in, uh, in today and un- understanding that, um, if you really just hold your present pleasures, then you could live that life at a consistent basis. You just reminded me of Dave Ramsey. Yeah? Yeah, you know what Dave Ramsey says? What? Well, he says it a lot. I don't know if he came up with it, but he says, live now like no one will, so you can live tomorrow like no one can. Yeah, that's what I want to do. And to be honest... But nothing's guaranteed. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Nothing's guaranteed, man. And um, the whole whole thing... Um, on you know why I don't go out and stuff like that, and it's like, well, well, really, what are you working for or whatever? And it's like I'm not trying to be rich. I'm not trying to, um, you know, I don't, I don't like my main goal is not to be blingy or flashy or have the Land Rover or have the million dollar house or whatever. It's just, it's, it's for real wealth. It's like, what's the difference again? Wealth, well, wealth rich. is. Rich is um, your income and how much you make, and then wealth is what you actually hold and what you leave behind to your children. Um, there's a reason why I'm not married yet. There's a reason why I don't have children yet. It's because I'm still trying to figure out my craft so I can have that money, so I can hold it, and I can teach my kids on how to create it, and I can leave them with that um, lesson and some of that money to help them um, out. So me not going out um to work towards that is all i need for my discipline yeah so sacrifice now for a better future tomorrow in hopes that that we 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 have enough life to live and and it's it's not even about myself it's about other people i'm really trying to honestly um i'm trying to do this because the the main goal is to build a family right that's that's life you want to build a family you want to get married you want to have children you want to leave on a legacy and you want to live leave on you know you want to pass those that wealth through generations right that, that's back a good in, point back in the day that's why they're you know kings and queens and that's why like last names are so huge in cultures is because you want to you want to pass pass that on and um i'm just i'm just working really hard um to figure out on how i could pass that down um to generations yeah that's a good point ryan so um What's uh, what's after that? Actually, no, dude. That's for real. Like, keep that shit. That's for real. Why I'm doing it, and that's why everyone should be doing it. Should be doing what? If if you're working for consuming, you're selfish. What? Yeah. Why? Because you're working to make you happy. What about your children? What about your family? My children are fine. Are they really? Yeah. Except for mine is crying in the background. <laughs> So you're saying you're right, right now? No, no, absolutely not. I wouldn't be working, um, and I need to support my family. So, so that's what so people is do. Is that why you're working? I'm working for my family and yeah. for me, and to try to better myself and and see how much I can I can produce. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, your partner and your financial goals should align. That's number four. Number five, Ryan, don't be a renter your whole life. What? Tell us about this. Don't be a renter your whole life. Don't be a renter your whole life. Yes. Well, that is very controversial, Ralphie. If you're in transition, 
from one location to another location or if you recently just started a job you probably shouldn't buy you got to be really stable and have an understanding that uh, you should be in your home for a little bit of uh, time so you can build some equity and uh, be able to sell it what do you think well i think people that need there's a lot of factors that come into play because all right let's say i'm 18 years old um my parents are like get out of my house you need to you know live somewhere right that 18 year old is not gonna um, be able to be in a position to purchase a home right away um as in a sense of renting you can easily get in with a security deposit and rent that's pretty much it and homeowners and or renters insurance um with buying a house there's some other things that come into uh, play um you know down payments um there's there's just a lot of more uh, a lot more to get into a home um so i would say it's okay to rent if your end goal is to purchase a home um your end goal should be to purchase a home um, because um, this is controversial too, but um, I would say that um, owning real estate is probably the best um, investment that you could possibly make. Um, so the, most millionaires are um, created, um, create their wealth through real estate. So I, I think one of the things that, that we also need to mention is that um, this is advice in general, right? For most people, this doesn't apply to everybody, uh, but uh, uh, overall, uh, a home is, is a great investment because you build equity and you can, um, you know, use it, that equity to get into a larger home. So you can literally start from a very small home and work your way up into a, a much larger home. So and you're doing this slowly instead of, you know, coming up with one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for your three hundred or four hundred or five hundred thousand dollar house. That homeowner that is living in that four or five hundred six hundred seven hundred thousand dollar home that's unlikely his first home right it just goes back to uh living below your means um yeah let's say um you're pre-approved for three hundred thousand dollars that doesn't mean go out and buy a three hundred thousand dollar house that means you know maybe you should buy a two hundred or two hundred fifty thousand dollars uh home and then um build some equity on it sell it or even buy another house and rent it out, become a landlord yeah. and start building a portfolio of rental properties, whatever you want to do. There's so many different ways, but um, the end goal is to uh, own it and not give it to someone else. Um, it's a, um, it's, it's also a, a free, a free savings account. It is. Yeah. Um, there's some expenses to it. There's some repairs and, and um, you know, roofs and stuff that you need to, that you need to get done. But, overall it's a great it's a great investment Here, here's the thing though that everybody seems to leave out when they say well yeah when i rent i don't have to fix the roof or i don't have to fix the refrigerator and i don't have to pay property taxes what you guys are missing when you're renting when somebody buys an investment property they do their numbers before they buy the it's an investment they're doing numbers on it they are a they are adding their property taxes and capital expenditures, which are the roof. When the roof goes bad, your rent is going towards that. that. There's a thing called cash flow. If it's not flowing cash, it's not an investment. Some people do buy properties that are not negative cash flow. But for the most part, when, when an investor is, your landlord is buying the house, you're paying the property taxes. So when you say, yeah, well, Illinois property taxes are so expensive. There's a reason why rent goes up because property taxes go up. It costs your landlord more for you to live in there. So you're still paying for it. It's built into the rent. Yes. That's what it is. So when the fridge breaks, you're paying for it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's a good point, Ryan. So try to be a homeowner. And if you need any help with that, then uh, you can call this guy or you can call that guy over there. We will be able to help you out. We would love to help you guys out. <laughs> so next week we have a, uh, a, a lender that be able to answer some questions for those of you that are thinking of uh, p uh, purchasing a home uh, where you need to be financially and uh, what your credit score should look like so we look forward to that now that we mentioned on the podcast maybe this will put down some pressure to make sure he gets here on time and delivers for you guys all the goodies and six final the six 
don't don't leave it to chance ryan what does this mean chance the rapper chance uh he's from chicago right yeah 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 don't leave it a chance why not he's doing good things if it's meant to be it's up to me that is very true actually that's what this is anyone can do it what is not this everyone in? will will you where'd you get that from this was my second book this the was million, my second book millionaire Realistic. again ralphie you're a you're a bad influence ralphie yeah. we're doing this shit because of all these books yeah we read these books. That's another great thing. And we believe them, and then we act on it. That's what's so great on uh, the full disclaimer in the beginning, um, that we're we're not successful, and we're not CPAs, or we don't even know what's going on. This is just stuff that we're doing. That's another reason why we brought the podcast, because we're documenting. We want to show you guys that, um, that um, you know, everybody, everybody could do it, right? But not everyone will. We want everyone to... We want everyone. Every, we want everyone on the same on the same page, right? We want everyone to build wealth, right? That's the main goal, right? We we want everybody to be financially stable to the point where they're not worried about money. You know, we are gonna worry about money because the more money you make, sometimes if um, more money, more problems. More money, more problems. Yeah, but um, but you need you need to be somewhat financially literate to uh, to do well in life, and to most important, like you said leave something for your your daughter or yeah. or son my my biggest fear is to not to feel like um i don't have a skill or um i don't have a um to where i wouldn't be able to survive you know what i'm saying like i just feel that we should consistently be trying to figure out on how to uh better better our um finances because i talk to a lot of people and i'm i'm consistently stressed right now about you know trying to um you know get get things in order right um right now things are good but what happens when it's what happens when it's bad for everyone how are you gonna how am i gonna survive i'm like consistently trying to just like pre prepare for when shit hits the ceiling man yeah yeah that's important man you gotta be you gotta be got to be conscious that um we're not always young and that we millennials have a a whole different uh type of lifestyle and di different responsibilities than previous generations where we don't have uh as many union workers um and our expenses uh, as far as uh, you know school loans is extremely high so we have to play it a, a little different than previous generations but we're going to do fine because um uh, as we uh, saw in the statistics, uh, millennials are doing great, and uh, all we need to do is uh, make good financial decisions, and we should be fine, right? Cross your fingers. So the last one is leave it. Do not leave it to chance. That's the last one. Do not leave it to chance. You got to worry about the future because the future is not guaranteed, and the, prepare, the better prepared you are for the future, the better off you will be, right? Yep. So Social Security, believe it or not, is in some um, some distress, I guess. But um, if you're prepared, you may be able to come out ahead a little bit, right? Yeah. So don't rely on anybody else um, for your financial or future financial well-being. Think about tomorrow. Think about your lifestyle. Think about the possibility of your income going down because that's a possibility too, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're making a lot of cash. Sometimes you're not. And uh, you need to adjust for that. And the way, a simple way of doing it is um, just don't uh, don't live above your means. Most importantly, and some people some people do it uh, because it makes them feel better. You know the expense. I, I understand that. That makes sense. We all get happy when you, we get that Amazon package. <laughs> I sure door, do. Right. It, it's a feel good. But um, we're all struggling with it. Most importantly, people shouldn't feel like um, like they're they're the only ones with the problem. We all struggle from it. It's hard. It's very hard. It's hard, especially with social media. Social media makes it even harder, right? Yeah, people uh, as human beings are all trying to compete. Yeah, and um, you know when they see the Joneses and the nice car, um, they feel like that is. Um, a symbol of success when it's really not that just goes back to being rich and wealthy um having the nice car and the nice watch and the, the big house 
um, at the end of the day is not real wealth. Right. Unless you have a lot of money in the bank and you have a big house, but there's, there's a difference. For sure. For sure. But for the most people like me and you. Yeah. For regular folks like me and you um, and uh, maybe some people that are watching us. Um, these are good uh, habits to follow. So real quick, just to end this all up, wants versus needs. Ryan, don't buy stuff that you want um, because you really need um, a vehicle. You don't need a Mercedes. Avoid credit card debt. This one's super, super simple. Um, your money is, uh, you're throwing your money away. You're paying 27% or 20% in credit cards. Uh, your money is, is doing you no good. And the fact that you likely put expenses uh, on this credit card uh, for consumption purposes is double, double bad. Uh, don't buy a new car just because of the, the depreciation so quickly of new cars. Try to avoid car debt at all costs. And uh, if you do have a, a car note, make sure that it is a, uh, a very good, reliable vehicle and that uh, you don't buy it new, right, if you do have a note. Um, you and your partner should have uh, financial goals that align. This is having a team and your, your number one um, teammate should be your spouse. So your husband or wife should be aligned financially with your goals. And um, this is something else that you need to work through. Everybody has problems. So if, if you don't, if you guys don't have this uh, together, it's just something else that, that you need to work uh, towards, uh, be aligned and have two people with two incomes pushing in the right direction. Uh, five, don't be a renter for the majority of, those, of, of people that are listening. Um, there is some exceptions where you should uh, lease, um, but for the most of us, the majority of us, we should be buying a home. It's a forced savings plan and um, force is good. Uh, it's like the 401k. If they remove it from your, from your, from your paycheck before you have the chance to spend it, uh, you are more likely to save it, right? That's why the 401k is, is also helping a lot of people. So this is a forced saving pl savings plan. And if you're paying a, a, a rent, if you're paying rent, you could be using that towards um, a building equity in a home that you can letter, later sell and um, and either cash out or buy something larger or better, or r sell it and lease in your later years yep. with a nest egg of you know whatever your home is. There's a lot of people that are moving out of single family homes uh, into condos, right? Especially uh, older folks, mm -hmm. but um, they could buy their condo for cash because their home, um, you know, had built equity, and then. Um, six is don't leave it to chance. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. Um, you need to plan for the future. And if you fail to plan, um, you're going to fail. So that was pretty much the wrap up of, uh, the hour conversation that we had. I just talked a lot. Nice man. Uh, that was, uh, very well said. I like it. I like it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any feedback, let us know. Um, like, like we said, we're not uh, financial advisors and we're here because we all want to win. Um, we all want to help each other out. Um, so if um, there was anything that you heard us say that maybe you want to talk more about, uh, reach out to us and uh, we'd be more glad to um, talk to you guys. Yeah. Um, and we also hope to, to bring on people that are, that are smarter than us, right, about finances. Yeah, which is probably everybody. Everybody that comes down here is going to be better off than <laughs> us, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so the two books, again, uh, I'll hold mine up. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. The Millionaire Real Estate Investor, which is uh, by Gary read. Keller, which Gary is... Keller. KW, baby. Keller Williams. That's another reason why we chose KW. Yeah. It's all about mindset. It's all, pe people want to be around the same type of people. Everyone, if you want to have, if you want to have something... Just find the person that already has it and discipline. Yeah, don't reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Um, so stick with people that uh, that are aligned with your your goals too. So on number four, the partners. Uh, this includes friends too, to some extent, right? Most, most. Yeah. So what are we doing with this, Ryan? 
told me about this. I thought it was kind of cool. Um, Why do we have that here? So these are what are called AirPods. AirPods. You ever heard of these? Yeah, I got some of those. Yeah. I Ralphie wears these I all the time. I just got a pair the other day. What do you think? Total game changer, man. Told they you. are so awesome. I, told I feel you. so naked, man. The only naked? thing, I, the only thing I don't like is that it doesn't have the volume button on it. Yeah. Um, isn't there like a trick? I have to study these things. Can't you like wave it to like turn? It? You know what I said? What? I was when I was in the car. I was like volume up just to see if it would like go. It didn't do anything. So <laughs> if you guys want to know how to work these, don't reach out to us. But if you want to win them, reach out to us. If you guys want to win some AirPods, we are giving these away. No strings attached. You don't have to do nothing crazy. All you need to do is share this video. We're going to put it on Facebook. There's going to be a Facebook giveaway, right? Sure. All you need to do is hit the share button. You don't even have to put anything. You don't have to say anything. Just hit share, and it automatically enters you into this, and you guys will get AirPods. This Real Apple. These aren't the $30 ones off Amazon. These are from Best Buy. They were $180 free in your hand if you guys think that this is fake i've gave me and ralphie gave away macbooks we've gave away playstations we get we gave away, away a lot of stuff so if you want to win these airpods they can be yours couple days we're going to give them away all you need to do is hit share and we will put you in a raffle and the computer will automatically generate the winner no one will select it it will be random these could be yours you could be rocking some AirPods. When is this going to happen? When is this going to happen? When the, whenever you're finished editing the videos. Okay. So it's going to be like a, a, a two days from now, whenever this airs. Whenever this airs, three three days. It'll probably be, we'll do it sometime it's gonna be quick. during the weekend. All right. And then we'll just we'll just give it away. Um, simple, no strings attached, you know, nothing nothing weird, free. AirPods. Share, share it. Share Chicago it. Land. Yeah. And if you guys want, if, if you guys want to keep winning things like this like uh airpods uh we kind of want to start giving i want to start like we both want to start giving away stuff that um is a value something you could use something that helps you out so you know it'd be cool is if you wore these and listened to the millionaire real estate investor or the rich dad poor dad yeah so uh listen to some audiobooks with these um, I'm not gonna lie. I listen to music sometimes too. So yeah, too. you know to get you up and going or yeah. whatever. So these are of some value. Uh, we gave away iPads. Those are productive. Laptops. Yeah. Um, school supplies. So if you guys want to win more giveaways, um, subscribe. Hit the like button and uh, win giveaways. But most importantly, it's not all about giveaways. Um, it's about us being a community and learning together and building together and getting value from each other. And like, like Ralphie said, we're going to have, um, um, uh, business owners, um, people that are more successful than us. So, so we're continue, uh, continuing to learn and grow as a family, as a community. So if you guys have any input to on, on people that, um, in the Chicago land area that, uh, would like to be on to share some knowledge, like Ty Lopez, um, we would welcome uh, anybody here. All right, so I think that's it, Ryan. Thank you so much for your hour and a half or hour and 10 or 20 minutes. Uh, we appreciate all your feedback. Um, that's the end of the Ralphie and Ryan show uh, where we talked about money. And uh, sorry if this was boring, but we see you guys next week. Take it easy, guys. See ya.